When it comes to the English Language Paper 2 exam, one of the great advantages that you have is knowing the structure and the wording that each of the questions will adopt. Now, when it comes to question number two of the English Language Paper 2 exam, we always should anticipate that it's going to be a comparative question where you're looking at source A, source B, and you're writing a summary either of differences or similarities between something that's thematically similar within both sources. So as you know that you're going to be writing a comparative question relating to both source A and source B, either in similarities or differences, as you already know that, what I want to show you is how to craft a really perfect response and especially a perfect paragraph relating to this question and I'm going to use the 2020 mountain exam paper as my example. This is the exam where you've got Gertrude Bell in source B, this is a Victorian author who climbs the Meiji and in source A you've got Joe Simpson who uh, is in Peru and he's scaling a mountain. Okay so this is the question paper in case you want to check it out. Now with this question I want to use this as an example however to be honest with this grade 9 paragraph and especially how to structure it what I'd like to urge you to do is as you're looking through my explanation and how I've crafted this response try to see how you can make it applicable to other pe uh, past papers so to other paper 2 question 2s okay so the first thing you want to do is of course take your highlighter look at the question and highlight the keywords within the question now I've taken the most important and essential part of this question and it asks write a summary so it's always a summary question okay so write a summary of what you understand about the differences between the two companions Simon and Marius because we know in the extract that you've got the main authors and then they both have uh, companions that are climbing and descending the mountains with them in both sources okay now the first thing you want to do when you're looking at the question is obviously highlight the keywords because these are the keywords that you need to make sure you mention and reinforce in your responses. Now, when writing the perfect paragraph, I would suggest make your life easy, adopt the pill paragraph structure. Pill simply means point, evidence, explanation, and link. You start off by linking back to the question. This is your opening point. Then you add some evidence to support uh, your response from both source A and source B. Then you add an explanation. In this case, because this is just a summary question, you don't need to include techniques. You just literally launch into what is the key differences that you're supposed to be talking about in your explanation. And of course, in this case, it's the difference in the companions, Simon and Marius. And then you simply need to link it back to the question. That's step four of the pill paragraph. And as you can see here, I have colored the different steps within the pill paragraph in different colors. Blue for your point, red for your evidence, black for your explanation, and purple for your link. So let's have a look at how to open a grade nine point relating to this question. So you can begin with saying, firstly, whilst Simon seems rushed and inattentive when carrying Joe, Marius, are the key word in the question, is measured and meticulous when carrying Gertrude. Okay, so that's the first sentence in my opening point where I'm writing what is the difference between these two people, okay, between the two companions, Simon and Marius. One of them is really inattentive, the other is quite attentive and meticulous, and of course, hopefully you're also paying attention to my use of ambitious language and ambitious vocabulary. But I don't stop there in my point, I add just an extra sentence. This may stem, this may come from the fact that Marius is her employee, this is Gertrude, yet Simon is Joe's fellow traveller, okay? So this may stem from the fact that Marius is her employee, yet Simon is Joe's fellow traveller. As you can see here in my opening point, what I've done is I've separated it into two separate points. I've started off with directly answering the question. Here's the difference between Simon, the way he is very, very um, careless and a bit sloppy when carrying down his companion Joe versus Marius who's very careful and very attentive when he's um, you know helping Gertrude down the mountain. Then I proceed with a second sentence basically saying this could stem from the fact that this could be down to the fact that one of them is an employee which is Marius and the other is just a fellow cl climber and this is Simon right so Simon is a fellow climber he doesn't necessarily need to worry about making money and looking after his boss whilst of course Marius has been hired by Gertrude meaning Gertrude is his boss so of course he has to be careful when handling her. So that's my opening point. Let's look at how I have embedded my evidence from two sources. Remember, when you are writing comparatively about both sources, you have to make sure in your opening point you're talking about them, but also in your evidence, you're finding two bits of evidence. So in source A, 
Joe is infuriated as he, evidence from source A, swore Simon's character to the devil. That's my first bit of evidence from source A. However, now I'm going to embed my second bit of evidence from source B. Yet in source B, Gertrude notes that Marius pulled me up like a parcel, okay? Hopefully, as you can see, in terms of comparing both sources, I'm keeping it quite consistent. In my opening point, I've talked about source A and source B. Now my evidence, I've added a bit of evidence from source A and a bit of evidence from source B. Let's have a look at the explanation. This is where the bulk of your marks are, where you're talking about both sources and highlighting the difference between these two people. It is clear that Simon seems less assiduous, which means careful than Marius. Indeed, Marius is extremely attentive to Gertrude as he carries her. It is evident that Simon's behavior stems from his position as Joe's fellow climber, yet Marius's actions reveal he must take great care of Gertrude as her employee. So in my explanation, I have made it really clear that one of them is, you know, very assiduous. I'm using ambitious language and ambitious vocabulary. However, I've also then st stated and reinforced the idea that actually the reason why they're so different as companions, the reason why there's these massive differences between the two is one of them is a hired help. The other is just, you know, hanging out with his friend, the climbing, and now he's kind of helping him down because of course we know in the extract that he has a broken leg. So let's have a look at the link back to the question. Hence, whilst Marius seems punctilious, which means careful around his companion, Simon is less attentive. Simon is more reckless, even if Joe's leg is broken. So obviously here I'm making the note that actually Simon is reckless because you know the kind of equal companion in terms of their status as companions but actually it's interesting that he's reckless even if his friend's leg is broken when he's helping him down the mountain however marius appears careful and calculated in his actions so what i've done in my link back to the question is i've made it really really clear what are the key differences between the two and i've also made it really clear that it's interesting that simon even if his companion has a broken leg Simon is still way less careful than Marius, who obviously has been hired to help Gertrude and he's taken his job really, really seriously. So that's really it when it comes to um, adopting an approach and obviously writing a four mark paragraph, right? So you want to aim in this kind of question. This is uh, language paper two, question number two. You want to go for two of these paragraphs, okay? Two comparative paragraphs in order to secure your full eight marks. However, this is how a really good full mark paragraph looks like. You open with your point where you're talking about both sources then you have your evidence make sure you talk about both sources then in your explanation you develop what does that mean within this evidence okay as it's a summary you don't have to talk about technique you leave that to question number four however in this case you still have to mention what are the differences before you then link it back to the question and that's how you write a really good grade nine response to question number two